My name is Riley. <laughs> um, and I've been- Hello and welcome back to Pretty Pessimistic. If you are new, which most of you probably are because I think at this point I have like 25 subscribers. Thank you to those OG 25 who have been around. Today we are going to be discussing Shelby Oaks or what you may also know as the paranormal paranoids. Um, I'm super excited to talk about this. I have been digging, delving, diving into this for days. Zelda, and come here, baby. Zelda doesn't want to come here right now. Come here, baby. Not having it. Riley Brennan was born in Ohio. Find out too much about her young childhood. I know she has a sister named Mia. At the age of 13, Riley begins to have these really weird dreams. In these dreams, she feels trapped. She says um, she has dreams of some kind of paranormal entity in her window. And it's very scary for her it's kind of traumatizing she also sees it kind of like a vision and not just a dream riley also is dreaming of places that she's never been to before which is important for <clears throat> the future of this story she's dreaming of these different places that she's never been to which are weird to her at 13 years old sometime in her teenage years riley meets david peter and laura they become friends and they decide to create a paranormal group the paranormal paranoids um it's mostly david and riley's idea david and riley end up becoming an item they are a couple and peter and laura are are also a couple but they're a group of friends so two couples four people a group of friends david and riley have the idea to start a youtube channel where they you know try to find paranormal activity they call it the paranormal paranoids and it's super exciting riley is the host they're gonna go to these different places to investigate for paranormal activity in the beginning it was kind of just a like a, a joke I, I don't really know if i want to say a joke it was kind of just like something they were playing around with but as time went on they got more and more serious and they started looking into like real cases and filming real videos the first case that we know of is a case about a woman called mary talbert mary talbert was born in 1968 um, she committed, she committed unaliving herself in the woods, the woods of Kiwanoga, Kiwanaga Falls in 1994. Her body was found by a couple who was hiking and that's about the most we know. Mary Talbert, born in 1968, died from unaliving herself in 1994 in the woods of Mm, this word falls after the paranormal paranoids go and film in the woods um do their mary talbert episode they go home and they go through their footage when they go through their footage they feel like they found a few things so you know i guess you would think that would be more exciting for them they're like oh look 
it's working we're actually finding evidence which is what they wanted in the first place that's what any paranormal investigators want right evidence so they're getting some evidence later on we also see a video of peter talking to riley in this conversation peter asks riley about her sister mia riley tells him that mia doesn't really like the idea of them doing this paranormal investigating and doesn't think that riley should do it anymore mia thinks riley is wasting her time peter tells riley that you know that's not the case eventually they will find success if they just keep moving forward and doing the best that they can right right that's how every youtube situation works just keep doing it and you will be successful <laughs> isn't that a wonderful thought <laughs> the next video that we get from the paranormal paranoids is a video of a a is a video <laughs> of an investigation at a prison I'm just going to go ahead and play the video footage of the prison episode because it's kind of weird. I don't really know what to say about the figure that was quite strange um this is what i think i think that in this episode they're definitely trying to show that riley has some kind of a connection with the paranormal activity entity whatever it is because that breath that breath where you could see riley's breath that was absolutely petrifying okay so obviously they want to show that she has a connection or something is trying to reach out to her um she stops dead in her tracks like she's seen it before and then seconds afterwards you can see her breath clearly in the air they're trying to form some kind of a connection there The next place they go is a place called the unaliving shed so apparently a lot of people have unalived themselves in this shed like over 60 people um personally i think it's gonna have something to do with the future of this whole thing but apparently a lot of people have done that at that shed so you can tell that people still visit the shed there's still you know it kind of looks like a place where somebody might you know camp out overnight not like pitch a tent camp like abandoned home camp nothing interesting really happens here i think that anything interesting that's going to happen there will be in the future or i don't know if you want to call it in, uh, in the future of the shelby oaks so the next place they go to <laughs> something really done something really done fell on my leg and i jumped like that oh my god okay <clears throat> The next episode is the school episode. The school episode is pretty wild. So they go into the school and they're apparently a school in Indiana and they're investigating this school. Lincoln 
old school, maybe. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show the footage. Getting in touch with the janitor, but he didn't answer his phone. When the staff realized they'd have to quickly do some cleaning of the school before the children arrived, they went to the janitor's closet for supplies. That's when they found him. The janitor's body was crumpled in the corner of the closet. Every bone in his body was broken. His mop was shoved so far down his throat, the strings were hanging out of his mouth. There was no sign of a struggle, no forced entry into the school, no arrests made. Ever since then, the school has gone through an average of five custodians a year. They'd get to work and find rooms already cleaned. The janitor's closet wouldn't open no matter how hard they tried. And sometimes, after they cleaned a room, they'd find it trashed moments later, even though they were alone in the building. Generations of kids since then have made him a legend. But is the legend true? Did the Lincoln Elementary janitor really die in such a grotesque and unexplainable way? Right? Well, what is that? Right? Don't go out by yourself, Riley. I could not have done that if I hey, fucking tried. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh. That was wild. What's wrong with you? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Oh, my okay. gosh. Let's, Aren't let's, you glad we oh. fucking stayed now? <laughs> oh. that's, what, that's what we're here for. Dude. Things take a super wild turn. Obviously, we are supposed to see that Riley is now like a paranormal magnet or something because obviously everywhere she goes, something is happening. She is now, you can almost tell now that she's slightly going downhill or maybe not slightly. She's really going downhill. She literally chased a random noise in the bottom of a school that nobody even knew what it was or could be to find a random um i don't know if that's supposed to be a paranormal entity or an actual man maybe in this school randomly which who knows what could have happened if her friends weren't behind her so after this riley talks to peter a little bit more um personally that you can see here before the team is going to head out to Shelby Oaks, Riley has another conversation with Peter where Peter kind of tells her, hey, look, Riley, you have a gift. And Riley is like, I don't know about this gift. Um, I don't really have too much to say about what they talk about here. Um, the next thing that I want to get into is obviously the next place that they plan on going to is Shelby Oaks. But from this point, we never actually see this group get to Shelby Oaks. This is where the group just goes missing. All four of these kids go missing. Nobody knows where they are. Still, Riley... Peter, David, Laura, all of them vanish. I'm assuming on their way to Shelby Oaks. I'm not exactly sure where they vanish or when they vanish, but they vanish. And nobody can find them anymore. Which it is really kind of creepy. Could you imagine? I cannot even imagine. I would be like traumatized. I would definitely not be going to paranormally investigate any of those areas. I would be like, this is way more than a coincidence and I don't want to be any part of it. 
even though now all four of our paranormal paranoids have disappeared the team is missing this is not the end of this story enter just the paranoid just the paranoid is an online a person online who posts to a reddit and also twitter i think i've seen and jess went back to her parents house and they gave her a box they packed of her stuff with like books and a cd player and her laptop which had all of these downloaded paranormal paranoids videos jess finds this laptop and she's like oh i used to watch all these paranormal paranoid episodes when i was like 12 years old and she kind of having a nostalgia moment this is so cool but she remembers them going missing and she remembers like looking then online but she you know was only 12 years old and she's not from ohio which is where they were so she couldn't just go to ohio and look for the paranormal paranoids it was impossible and i mean eventually as she became a teenager it faded away but now that she had found this box and found those videos again jess is wondering where the paranormal paranoids are so on may 29th of 2021 jess the paranoid posts this on twitter she is beginning to publicly discuss the group online and she wants to find them in the present she remembers searching for them like i said before but she to find them because she was only 12. next enters noir noir aka looking for para 7 or just noir jess continues trying to find the paranormal paranoid as jess continues trying to find the paranormal paranoids a strange account begins sharing these clips with jess which this is the whole reason that we can see any of these well that's not true i'm that's not true some of these clips jess was able to retrieve from her laptop and some of them she was able to retrieve from a disc she was able to get clean but a lot of interesting things are shared by noir um a lot of things that are strange this all started out normal though he's i don't know if it's a he or she i shouldn't say he but noir seems to be just like a normal person trying to find the paranormal paranoids as well as jess but as time goes along things start to be introduced that kind of prove that noir isn't exactly just an outsider looking in he obviously has access to actual things that jess or the paranormal paranoids should have and nobody else should have like jess's artwork private videos just things that normal people like jess doesn't have but for some reason noir which is a private name no profile picture noir does have these kind of strange and it makes me think something is off about noir i mean i have theories thanks so much for sticking around to the end i will be posting my theories about paranormal paranoids next week in the mystery that will be unfolding over time if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you wish and if you do hit the notification bell because that is basically the subscribe button nowadays and i can't wait to see you guys next week thanks again for tuning in have a good weekend